Welcome to the Peaceful Wellness Podcast with me, your host, Deb Phelps. If you are ready to unite with your true nature and find the calm you need to go through this journey called life, then walk a while with me as we learn to be resilient with mind, body, spirit modalities. I am a meditation teacher, mindfulness coach, sound healer, yoga specialist, and these and other modalities have helped me to truly find peaceful wellness within. So let's take a mindful approach together now. Hello, my friends. Welcome to this episode of Peaceful Wellness. I took a break for the last two weeks, one because of the holidays, and then secondly, because on New Year's Eve, I found out that my brother had passed uh, due to COVID. Now I needed that break. And that's what's important that we take that time to rest, to be with what is right there in the present moment. Now, loss and grief can arise in different forms. And certainly knowing about his passing and certainly knowing that my brother in North Carolina had passed due to a bout in the hospital with COVID was uh, surprising and shocking. And unfortunately, we were not close and we had been disconnected for a long time. But still, there was grief and pain there, still is. And at the same time, I was also making the decision to not renew my lease for my office here in Madison. And again, more loss, grief, pain. And if you've ever been through divorce or other friendships ending, a career ending, a job ending, any matter of separations that occur, We experience grief. And maybe sometimes we don't think that we do, yet we do. And sometimes there's hurt, sometimes there's anger. Now, I've had to accept that I won't be able to connect with my brother again, other than spiritually. And there's a sting with that. Even though I know at the time, when I disconnected from him, it was necessary to create safe and healthy boundaries. At times, other feelings that I have had, even feeling numb, feeling angry, feeling hurt, feeling at a loss, knowing that there'll never be an opportunity to make that connection again. Although I know that when I made those boundaries, I needed to do so. And I was at peace with that. But it doesn't change the fact of what is true right now. Or is that in the body, he's gone. And I am here. And so I'll continue to use my practices to help me as I move through this time and space. I've also had to accept that the office that I had here is no more after four years. And sometimes that sense of failure could come in along with this loss and grief. Yet it's another business as many (laughs) of us have experienced that has succumbed to COVID. And it's heartbreaking in both arenas that I'll never have that connection to my brother again. But also knowing that I put my whole heart and soul into my uh, business and creating that atmosphere that brought safety and comfort to those who entered through the doorway. Yet when we're dealing with these gut-wrenching experiences, such as I'm in the midst of at this moment, The key is to be kind and gentle with oneself. And if you know me, I use that term a lot, being kind and gentle, compassionate, and all of this applies. It really does. But what has helped me 
is mindfulness. That's what I teach. It's part of my life. And as Heather Stang in her book, Mindfulness and Grief writes, mindfulness lets you expand your view by placing you in the middle ground between denying your pain and overindulging in your suffering. From that vantage point, you can observe the whole experience with a sense of openness to whatever arises. You stay in contact with the entire scope of your existence and you experience grief without becoming grief itself. So yes, you can be with your pain and not be overwhelmed with it. And that's the place that I am most of the time. I'm pretty calm, neutral. But when I do have feelings, I allow them to be what they are. And remember, there's no single right way to grieve. We each experience grief in our own way. Yes, it can be caused by the death of a loved one, a loss of job or income, divorce, friendship that has come to an end. Maybe a project that we were working on. But by being present to what is in our body and mind, we can develop awareness. And when we're aware, we create space for acceptance. So when we accept what is, it doesn't mean that we like it or agree with it. We may resist it. But when we're in that place of acceptance, it helps us to find peace and happiness and love. So you've probably heard me talk about frequently or refer to the RAIN practice. And the RAIN practice is something that Tara Brock has really uh, let it blossom in the mindfulness community. And I certainly would recommend her book, Radical Compassion. Now, the practice of RAIN, and I've talked about this before, so if you've missed that episode, just go over it briefly. It's recognizing what is happening allowing life to be just as it is, investigating with a gentle, curious attention, and then nurturing with a loving presence. So that acceptance is the allow stage of RAIN. I'm being present with myself. This is what is right now. Right now, it's like this. And when I have that emotion, where is it in my body? Can I sense that? Sometimes when we deny our emotions, we turn to what is external to soothe our pain. And I know there's times that I did too. I'm human, just like we all are. And the external items, whatever they may be, will only help the symptom for a brief time until the emotion arises again and in great force. And so being gentle and kind to ourselves with the emotions and I know for me, when I'm gentle and kind with myself, it helps me to respect myself and respect the emotion as well. So when we can be with that emotion, if it is the grief, if it is the loss, if it's anger, I know I had, I had some anger come up as to, well, why wasn't he vaccinated? You know, he was in the hospital for 12 days. I'm assuming he wasn't vaccinated. I certainly never wished any harm or suffering to him or his, I found out he had been married for nine years. I certainly don't wish any harm or suffering to his wife either. I never did. I always affirmed his basic goodness, the truth of who he is, no matter what he had gotten himself into in the past. And I was glad to hear that he did make a turnaround in his life and he was heading towards the goodness and he was making changes. And I was glad to see comments made by others about how much they appreciated him. I know my sister had just been reconnecting with him in the last couple of years, not briefly, but had been, and she told me this as well. So when we're with that emotion, we can ask that vulnerable place what it needs. And in the nurturing aspect of RAIN, maybe there's some 
compassionate words we can say to ourselves. Maybe we can place a hand on our heart. Maybe we can just spend some moments just resting in the heart space. Maybe we can ask someone for assistance. Another help that I have found, and that is through Paul Deniston, D-E-N-N-I-S-T-O-N, and his grief yoga training, but he has something called Grief Movement Guide. And even if you're not a yoga teacher, you can still take his grief movement guide training. And he talks about awareness being first, and it really does help assisting our healing process. And I, and I've taken his level one, I'm about to take his level two this week. And having that awareness is key. What is going on? What is present in my experience? And then expression follows in the sense that at times it may be hard for us to express exactly the emotions we are experiencing. We may need to say those out loud, whatever that is. And if we don't release what is there, it stays within the body. So what he does, he uses movement and breath as part of the process. And here we can affirm, I am speaking my truth to share with others what I want and what I need. And then what follows is, connection. As we embrace ourselves with love, surrender helps us with releasing the pain and embracing love to explore a path of peace or to peace, you could say. And then finally, evolution helps to tap into the strength, the courage, and the resilience that we have. So between the grief movement training and its exercises, plus the mindfulness for grief that I've worked with other clients with uh, the book Mindfulness for Grief from Heather Stang. Both are wonderful gifts. I appreciate those gifts that I've given to myself and that I've worked with clients with as well over the years. But this time it was for me. Sometimes it's even uh, a yoga nidra for grief. So a yoga nidra is a guided rest. And I'm going to include one that I've done at the end of this talk that I'm doing here right now. And I hope you use it for whatever you may be grieving. So when I have the gifts of mindfulness and silence, some mindful movement, maybe it's yoga, maybe it's just a few things on a, on a chair that I do, some practices from Paul Deniston. Maybe it's playing loud on my singing bowls and the gongs playing loud there. All this helps me to be a witness to my grief. The thing is, this transformation will arrive in its own time. As Jack Kornfield has written in The Wise Heart, a book of his, he says, when identification with the small senses of self drop away, what remains is the spacious heart that is connected to all things. So I know I am in communion with all that is and all beings. And my heart may be heavy, but it's really open wide to allow what needs entry into its chamber. It takes courage to do so, to be with grief and to do so with caring awareness. And that is mindfulness. And you can thank yourself, as I do, for this journey in life. So I'd like to mention, too, that Paul Deniston is coming out with a book on January 18th. And that book is Healing Through Yoga, Transform Loss into Empowerment. And you can pre-order it on Amazon right now. It's coming out January 18th, as I said. And he gives simple and powerful ways of healing. As I said, some of this have been very helpful for myself. And if you're going through some grief right now, or you know someone who is, maybe that will be a benefit for them. This could even be wonderful for people who are going through cancer or addiction, dealing with divorce, betrayal, breakup. 
ending of a friendship. It doesn't really matter. Grief is grief, wherever that may be. So with mindful practices, whether it's mindfulness or mindful movement, we can transform sadness into love, fear into courage, anger into purpose, anxiety into peace, guilt into grace, and even trauma into safe empowerment. And these are all pieces that I've learned over the years from not only trainings that I've attended, but also my own personal experience. And as I said, right now, it's like this. This is my personal experience that I'm going through. The heart can be heavy, but the mind can be light and continue to remember and remind me of the light that is within. So I hope you enjoy this yoga nidra practice for grief. And I hope it is of great benefit for you. And so I'll see you next time on the Peaceful Wellness Podcast. Thank you for taking your time to share with me today. Yoga Nidra for Grief. Welcome to Yoga Nidra for Grief. Grief is a regular part of life. Whenever grief comes to visit you in your life, whether it is cyclically or in unique moments, it's always an invitation to practice deep awareness. Yoga Nidra is a way of practicing sourcing your deepest strength by experiencing your true nature, that of awareness itself. From this place of deep awareness, you will not replace grief with other emotions but rather learn to welcome it, see it for what it is, and be the witness of it. Doing so, you will come to know your grief for its unique power to help you experience yourself as awareness. Through this practice, you will discover the part of you that is powerful enough to survive any loss and powerful enough to sanctify and make holy any event that occurs in your life as you weave together the beautiful and textured tapestry of life. As you come to know yourself as awareness, you will free yourself from being identified as and attached to emotions such as grief. Doing so also allows you to welcome grief, to hear its messages in your heart, and ultimately release grief and allow it to cycle out of your orbit when its time is over. If you are feeling grief in your life right now, I invite you to give yourself a moment and ground yourself to whatever your body is feeling in this moment. Give yourself a moment to open to your senses as you relax and close your eyes. Maybe send a few breaths out your mouth with a sigh to release any tension that you may have as you begin your practice. As you begin our yoga nidra practice, open up to awareness by feeling your body. Start to simply welcome anything that you are aware of in your body, recognizing it for exactly what it is, and just practice being merely the witness of it. Throughout this practice, whatever arises in your awareness, either through my suggestion or spontaneously, follow the same pattern of simply welcoming, recognizing, and witnessing. Remember that as long as it feels safe, whatever arises during our practice, you will simply welcome, recognize, and witness. I'd like to create a sankalpa, 
This is the seed of your intention that will act like your guiding star through your practice. This sankalpa is a positive statement of truth. And I invite you to repeat the following positive statement in your mind. I acknowledge my grief as a witness of my love, a testament of my strength, and a guide that is leading me toward my highest being. Repeat this a few times in your mind. I acknowledge my grief as a witness of my love, a testament of my strength, and a guide that is leading me toward my highest being. Now, as you continue to invite relaxation, bring to mind a place that for you is a sanctuary. Remember or imagine a time where you felt love, where you felt wholeness, calm, and peace. And bring this alive by using all of your senses, not as if you were seeing it on a screen or hearing a story about it but actually bring the colors and shapes of your sanctuary to your awareness. In this moment, see your sanctuary with the scene where you feel love, where you feel wholeness or peace. Again, notice the colors, the shapes and textures. Notice what it smells like here in your sanctuary. Notice the sounds that exist. Notice tastes. Notice the sensations from textures or temperature and allow that feeling to move over your entire body. Now invite whatever emotion exists in your sanctuary that of wholeness, of love, or of peace. And notice where you feel that emotion in your body. And know that you can always come back to your sanctuary whenever you feel like you need it. And if anything ever feels unsafe during this practice or any other time in waking or dreaming consciousness, you are welcome to return to the sanctuary. You can come back to this place simply by using your senses. As you continue along your yoga nidra practice, Connect yourself to the feeling of your body. You will begin to feel more and more grounded with deepening layers of awareness as you become more aware of your body. In this moment, simply feel your body. All you need to do is simply be aware of and welcome the sensation of body to recognize it as sensation and to merely be the witness of body. Allow yourself to relax as you feel the sensation of your mouth, your eyes, and your ears. Feel the sensation of your nose. Welcome the sensation of the entire face, from forehead to chin, ear to ear. Feel your entire face. Simply welcome it as sensation. Recognize it as sensation. And simply witness your face as sensation. Allow yourself to relax as you feel the crown of your head and the back of your head. 
There's nothing to do, but experience your head is sensation. Feel your face, your scalp, your entire head as sensation. There's nothing to do, nothing to change. You are simply experiencing your head as sensation. Now trace the sensation of collarbones and shoulders. Trace the sensation of your body down the arms to elbows, through forearms to hands, and pay particular attention to the sensation of your left palm, left thumb, index finger, middle finger, fourth finger, little finger, and as you bring your awareness to these parts of your being, simply allow them to relax. You are simply witnessing your left hand. Nothing to do or change. You are just noticing its presence. Likewise, begin to notice your right palm, right thumb, index finger, middle finger, fourth finger, little finger. You are experiencing the sensation of your right hand, merely a sensation. You are being the witness to the sensation of right hand. Now feel left hand again, right hand. Now feel both hands simultaneously. Feel them as one thing. Be aware of both hands simultaneously. Now notice whatever you happen to be aware of in this moment. And while you notice that sensations will come and go, what doesn't change is awareness. It is the changing sensations that reveal unchanging awareness. In this moment, be awareness itself. You are awareness experiencing itself as sensation. As awareness, feel yourself as the sensation of chest. Linger on the sensation of your heart. If anything spontaneously arises, be that emotion or a felt sense of lightness or heaviness, remember you are simply welcoming, recognizing, and witnessing it. You are not trying to hold on to or fix it. Nonetheless, if at any time anything feels a little bit too heavy, or something arises that you don't want to work on in the moment, go back into your sanctuary where you felt love, wholeness, calm, and peace by using your senses. Otherwise, if it feels safe, bring your attention from the sensation of heart to belly. Now feel your back, shoulder blades, spine. Feel your ribs and lower back. Now simply welcome your entire trunk as sensation, your chest and belly and back. Feel yourself becoming increasingly more relaxed as you simply witness yourself feeling the sensation of body. You are awareness itself, experiencing itself as the sensation of body. Bring your attention to the sensations of your pelvis, front of pelvis, back of pelvis, the right and left sides of pelvis. 
bring your attention to the sensations of pelvis without anything to do or change. You are simply experiencing the sensations of pelvis. Feel the sensation of your body. Tracing the sensation as it moves from pelvis down your legs to your knees. Trace the sensation from knees to ankles, from ankles to feet, and put a little bit of attention on the sole of your left foot, your left toes, sole of your right foot, right toes. Now bring your attention to the sensation of the entire left side of body from head to toe. Just feel the left side. As you do, adopt the feeling of lightness. Your whole body is becoming light, almost weightless. Feel your entire left side is light. Now feel the entire right side of your body and adopt this feeling of lightness. Your entire right side is feeling light. Nothing to do, nothing to change. You are simply experiencing the right side of your body as light. Now feel both sides simultaneously. Your entire body feels light. Notice whatever you are aware of in this moment, internally or externally, be that sensation or feelings, body or thoughts or emotions. Simply welcome whatever you are experiencing. Recognize it for exactly what it is. And remember, you are merely the witness to whatever you are experiencing and the sensations, thoughts, or experiences. Sensations will all come and go, but they reveal an unchanging awareness. Be the unchanging awareness experiencing itself as anything that you are aware of in this moment. Be awareness itself, experiencing itself as whatever you are aware of in this moment. Now I want you to notice in this moment whatever energy you feel in your body right now. Notice whatever energy you feel in your body. Prana. Prana is the life force energy of all things, and it can manifest by feeling heaviness or lightness, or by seeing colors or feeling vibrations. Just sense into however energy feels for you in this moment. Notice how and where you feel energy. Does it have a color or a vibration? Now, if it feels safe, I want you to remember or recognize how grief feels in your energy and in your body from this place of relaxed awareness. Invite grief to the surface for a moment to simply observe it, welcome it in, and to recognize it as energy, manifesting as an emotion, nothing more and nothing less, and just be the witness to this energy. What is its color? Its vibration? You're not trying to fix it or change it, send it away, or hold on to it. Merely be curious about the feeling of grief. Now, don't get attached to it. In this moment, I want you to conceptualize the opposite of grief for you. What is the opposite of grief? And remember or imagine what that energy feels like. And notice where you feel that in your body. 
what is the opposite of grief? And invite that to the surface and remember or imagine what that feels like and feel that energy in your body. Does it feel like it has a color or vibration? Now let go of that and for a moment, pick up grief as well as this opposite energy at the same time. Hold grief and its opposite at the same time. Remember, this doesn't need to make sense. But if that's hard to conceptualize, feel like you're holding grief in one hand and its opposite in the other, but you are holding them simultaneously. Notice that while grief may come and go, as does its opposite, the part of you that is aware is larger than grief or its opposite, but can hold either of these readily. Grief may come and go, but the part of you that we're accessing is larger than grief. Through your yoga nidra practice, you are simply allowing yourself to welcome, recognize, and witness all the ways that grief affects your being. Remember, you are awareness itself, coming to know itself in this moment through grief. You are experiencing yourself as awareness itself. What are your thoughts around grief? You are awareness itself, experiencing itself as thoughts. Maybe grief leaves your thoughts, or when you think of grief, you have particular thoughts. But in this moment, simply welcome whatever you are thinking around grief, whatever thoughts or memories exist around grief and practice merely being the witness of thoughts. Remember, you are welcoming, recognizing, and witnessing thoughts. And just like emotions, thoughts will come and go. What you are is larger than thoughts, but as thoughts come and go, they reveal that thing that doesn't change, awareness itself. Be awareness itself, experiencing itself as thoughts. Please go with me on a visual journey. Visualize a moment when your grief has passed you. Grief has passed you by and it's been replaced with a sure loving knowledge in your heart of the power of your love, of your strength and your increased wisdom. See this visualization not as if you are watching a screen, but you are seeing it with your own eyes, sensing it, hearing that with your ears, smelling the scene with your nostrils, feeling this in your heart and with your body. This is a moment when grief has passed you by and it's been replaced with a sure loving knowledge, a wisdom in your heart. This is the knowledge and wisdom of the power of your love, of your strength. As awareness itself, you are experiencing this vision, this moment when grief has left, and now you remember or imagine what it feels like to have joy in your life.
remember or imagine love, peace, pleasure, and perhaps you take one of these or all of the following emotions to feel in your body. Joy, love, peace, pleasure. Notice exactly where you feel any or all of these emotions. And tap into your senses again. Feel any or all of these together. What they look like. What they feel like. Smell like. And taste like and give yourself over completely to the feeling of joy, love, peace, and pleasure. Despite any event that may occur in your life, these parts of you always exist, and as awareness itself, you are simply aware of joy, love, peace, pleasure. Notice how in your body you feel these things. Simply welcoming, recognizing, and witnessing them. Your awareness itself, experiencing itself as joy, love, peace, and pleasure. And in this moment, go back to that vision, the moment when grief has passed you by and it's been replaced with that sure, loving knowledge there in your heart, the knowledge of the power of your love and your strength and increased wisdom. as awareness itself. Witness whatever thoughts you may have around grief. Be awareness itself witnessing any energy that the emotion of grief evokes or witnessing any other emotion that you may be aware of in this moment possibly the opposite of grief. Remember the colors and the vibrations where you feel that energy, that emotion in your body. As awareness itself, witness the sensations in your body. Maybe revisiting the place where it feels like grief lives in your body. Notice whatever you are most aware of in the sensation of your body. And you may be curious as to whether or not anything feels like it has changed. In this moment, remember your sanctuary. This is your place of solace, the time when you felt love, wholeness, and peace. Remember those scenes, that scene with the smells and the tastes and in your mind. I want you to repeat your sankalpa. Repeat after me in your mind. I acknowledge my grief as a witness of my love, a testament of my strength, and a guide leading me toward my highest being. I acknowledge my grief as a witness of my love, a testament of my strength, and a guide leading me toward my highest being.
In a few moments, we will finish our yoga nidra practice. And because of this practice, you will move forward along the pathway of your grief. This practice has the power to strengthen you, even after it's finished. Do this practice as often as you feel you need to experience yourself as awareness. You may source your grief to access the limitless wellspring of your heart. And this gives you immense power. This power will fuel you to live your highest purpose in your life. May your heart be strong and your love be everlasting. In a moment, I will count down from five to one and that will signal the end of our yoga nidra practice. Five. Four, three, two, one. Yoga Nidra is now complete. Thank you for joining with me today. For my weekly classes, meditation and modalities on demand library, self study courses, and private sessions, visit my website at peacefulwellness.org.